Hey everyone, let's see how to make a computer graphics robot using hierarchical modeling. This is our robot. It's actually a robot arm, but it has some cool moves. We're going to make it out of these three squares. Let's start with the base. This square is already pretty close. We just have to make it a little shorter. Let's shrink it vertically by 50%. We can do that with this matrix, which divides the Y coordinate by two. But instead, we'll be using a three by three version, which lets us tra represent translations too. This is known as homogeneous coordinates. Okay, let's move to the next part of the robot, the red body. It needs to be resized and go on top of the base, like this. We'll start by shrinking it horizontally and stretching it vertically, like this. Next, we'll move it up using a translation matrix. Is this the right order to apply these matrices? Let's take a closer look. Here we want to scale first and then translate. So shouldn't we swap the matrix order here? Let's try this out. These matrices are applied by multiplying a vector on the right. But now you can see that T will multiply X first. This is the opposite of what we want. So having S on the right is correct. Okay, let's add the final part. We'll start by scaling it and translating it to the top. Finally, we'll rotate it into position. Wait, that's not right. Ah, it rotated about the origin, which is at the bottom of this figure. To understand how to fix this, let's take a closer look at how rotations work. When you apply a rotation, everything moves. Well, almost everything. There is one point that is fixed, the origin. If one of your objects touches the origin, that point won't move at all. The same is true for scaling. It's true for any transform that can be represented as a two by two matrix. This is super useful. Let's see how. Just think of the point on your model that you want to stay fixed. In this case, it's the bottom of the green part. Now translate your model so that this point is at the origin, then apply the rotation. Let's try this out now. Rewind to where we have our green part scaled, but it hasn't been moved yet. Let's move so that the base, our desired fixed point, sits at the origin. Now we'll rotate it and translate it up to sit on top of the red part. Voila, our robot is complete. Well, yeah, but it was kind of painful. We had to write a ton of matrices. And suppose we wanted to add a fourth part, this orange one. It gets even worse. And then there's another problem. What if you want to move your robot? Here we apply a translation to the base. Whoops, the rest of the robot got left behind. I don't think anyone would want a robot that did this. So let me tell you about a better way to build your robot using something called hierarchical modeling. So far, we've used a single global coordinate frame for all parts of the robot. Instead, let's introduce three local coordinate frames, one for each part. We'll start by centering each square in its own local coordinate frame, like this. Now let's apply the scale matrix to each part and translate each part along the y-axis, but in its own local coordinate frame. That's it, we have our robot, and with just two simple transforms for each part. But where did these coordinate frames come from? Let's set those up. We'll start with the one at the base that we'll call C0. Now to get C1, we just need to translate up. Let's give the robot a rotary join at C1. We can do this by adding a rotation matrix R1. And this rotates the entire upper assembly, which is cool. So which order should we specify these two operations? TR or RT? Let's take a closer look. Suppose we applied the translation first. Now if we rotate, C1 gets moved to the wrong place since the origin of rotation is at the bottom. Instead, let's rotate first and then translate. Cool. All right, now we'll repeat the process to create C2 using another rotation and translation. Now what happens if we translate the base? Let's add a translation matrix T0 to find out. Translating C0 causes the whole robot to translate instead of disconnecting the base, which is great. This works because the rest of the model is defined relative to C0, 
So moving C0 moves the whole model. And changing R1 will rotate the entire upper assembly. Finally, if we want to rotate only the green part, we change R2. This is great. It moves like a robot. Okay, this is still a lot of stuff to keep track of. We have part transformations and coordinate transformations. How do we use all of this to render the robot correctly? Turns out that there's a very elegant solution using trees. C0 is our first coordinate frame, and we'll put it in the root of our tree. C1 is defined relative to C0, so we'll make it a child, and put its transforms on the edge between them. Similarly, we'll make C2 a child of C1, along with its transforms. Finally, we'll put T0 on top, as that transforms the whole model. Okay, now we have a tree representing all of the local coordinate frames. We'll now add the parts too. The base is defined relative to C0, so it becomes a child, along with its transforms. And we'll do the same for the red and the green parts. This tree represents our entire robot as a hierarchical model. So how do we render the model? The answer is using depth-first traversal, a standard tree traversal algorithm. To do this, we'll use a matrix stack, which will hold the current active set of transforms to apply to each part. As we traverse the tree, matrices will be pushed onto or popped off of the stack. We'll start by pushing T0 from the root node. Next, we'll traverse the left subtree. As we traverse the edge to the blue node, that edge's transforms get pushed onto the stack. Now it's time to render the base. All the transforms that we need are ready on the stack, ordered from top to bottom. So the base is correctly scaled and translated. Now that we're done with the base node, we'll pop its transforms and move to the next node, C1. By the time we traverse down to the red node, all of its transforms are on the stack, both to correctly transform the red part as well as its local coordinate frame. Now we continue on down to the green node. And the traversal completes with rendering the green part with all of its transforms. Voila! As you can see, there are a lot of matrices on the stack that get applied to the green part. But the magic of the hierarchy is that we don't have to keep track of all of that. A tree traversal takes care of it automatically. We just focus on the easier task of defining each local coordinate frame and the local part transforms. So, you're probably getting kind of tired of robot arms. Am I right? Well, let's zoom out a bit. It's actually a bunny and we can represent it too with a slightly bigger tree. No wait, it's a bug. Hierarchies are amazing. You can even have multiple objects in the same hierarchy. Plus lights and cameras. In fact, an entire scene can be represented. We call this the scene graph. I hope you enjoyed this video on hierarchical modeling and some of the amazing things it can do.